Hello, my name is Maya Petrova. I am a medical consultant of Neurosoft company and today uh, we will perform automatically auditory brain stain responses and auditory brain stain responses in the baby using the uh, audio smart device. The results of these tests allow us to evaluate the functional state of retrocochlear portion of auditory system. Uh, for example, auditory nerve, uh, cochlear nuclei, and uh, the structures of the brainstem. AABR test is very simple and can be performed uh, by a technician because it doesn't require any inspection uh, by the doctor. The room uh, there you will perform uh, AABR or ABR tests. Uh, should have good grounding and the environmental noise level should be low enough. Uh, then you test babies. Uh, your babies uh, should be asleep. Uh, then you perform such tests in adults. Your patient can be relaxed, not sleeping, but relaxed and rely from construction of the muscles of neck and face uh, and stay still during acquisition. Uh, as we use the probe as the main stimulator during these procedures, we need to uh, visual inspect the state of the outer ear canal and tympanic membrane performing otoscopy because there are some contraindications of positioning of the probe in some cases. And also you need uh, to look to the skin at the electrodes positioning sites. The skin should be pure and it uh, should not be any inflammatory or allergic signs or abrasions. And mostly uh, we will use uh, the single-use hydrogel electrodes. Uh, before the positioning of such type electrode, uh, we need to prepare the skin properly. Firstly, in the adults, uh, we use um, spiritus uh, napkins to degrease the skin. Uh, in the babies, uh, we can use only abrasive paste and not spiritus. Uh, using the abrasive paste is useful to degrease the electrode impedance, so we need to gently uh, rub the skin till a slightly redness and after that uh, we can position the electrodes. Uh, we uh, can use single-use hydrogel electrodes or also we can use cup electrodes. Before positioning cups electrodes we need to fill in the cup with the adhesive paste. After we will position our electrodes on the skin we will connect it with the alligator connectors cables. The cables must be uh, twitched around to minimize the influence of the electromagnetic noise. After that, we connect our electrodes with the cables to the special electrode adapter, which has color indication. When we use the probe as a stimulator, we need to choose the proper size and form of the probe tip and put it tightly on the probe. In some cases, uh, for example, when we need to deliver uh, the stimulus uh, of the high intensity, then it can be delivered uh, using the probe. We can also use uh, different types of stimulators, for example, headphones, TDH39 uh, or insert earphones. In, in such cases, we need to connect it to the audio smart using a uh, special adapter. Okay, now we are ready to register automatically ABR test. We need to choose the side of stimulation where we have positioned our probe. Uh, the system revealed the quality of electrode positioning and zoned positioning. And now we are in the registration window. 
PC, the native EEG signal in the bottom of our screen. Also, this see the quality of electrodes positioning. It is good. All the um, answers that which are um, with higher amplitude and uh, suspicious to the notch, for example, are go to the rejected artifacts. And here we see the probability of our response, which is calculated automatically. And when it reach uh, the higher level, we uh, get the result pass. Uh, so uh, in this test, we uh, don't need any uh, doctor's um, visual inspections of the curves like in the ABR test. So this test can be um, performed uh, with the technicians or such. Uh, medical staff as technician. So uh, we can save the result, we can print via Bluetooth printer or after finished we also can export uh, these results in the Neuro Audio Screen Manager program in the PC. Now we are ready to perform ABR test we have positioned our electrodes and after our child um, became asleep we have positioned the probe so we choose the proper site of stimulation the system revealed the quality of positioning the electrodes and the probe and after that asks us to enter the intensity level uh, the maximal intensity level uh, will depend on the type of stimulator you used, for example, probe or mm, headphones or insects, for example, in some cases. So we enter the intensity, press yes. And after that, we are going to registration window. We see the morphology of curve with some peaks. And also, we see some uh, graphs with the progress level out of 2000 stimulus and the noise level graph. You need uh, to see how high is the uh, residual noise level. It's ideal then uh, it will be not less than 40 nanovolts like here. And uh, here you see the FSP number, uh, the higher it, uh, the better uh, your situation is. It uh, must, uh, should be higher than uh, 3.1. So we see the curve is stable enough and we see some peaks and we need to check if it is reproducible. Uh, then we will register the second curve on this intensity. And so we go for the second curve registration on the same intensity to see the reproducibility. We see that our conditions are changing a little bit, so the residual noise level become a little higher it's not good but uh, we see that the peak the main peak that is suspicious on the five if peak is uh, positioned on the same place and also the third peak also on the same place so the curve is reproducible and we uh, get the response but not a notch for example. See the good response on the five peak and uh, we can position our marker. We can change the amplitude for better visualization and we can put the markers, the marker of the fifth peak and see the latency below here. Now 
uh, we can perform registration on the lower intensity for example on the 45 decibels going uh, to the threshold level let's start the registration and also uh, we can see uh, how uh, the latency of this peak um, is going to become uh, more longer on the lower intensity level. It's a normal situation of the latency positioning on the low intensity level. So we see the morphology with something suspicious on the fifth peak. Uh, but we need to perform the second stimulation cycle to estimate the reproducibility of response. We see that the uh, residual noise level is not ideal now, but enough to get response now. And now we need to register the second curve on the same intensity level to estimate the reproducibility of response. We see that the fifth peak is positioning on the same place and we are waiting to finish the registration if we need. If we need to finish the registration before this time we can push here if the morphology is good enough and the reproducibility is good. So after that uh, we can position our marker and see the latency below here now and we can go to a low intensity if we need. Let's try to register the response on the 30 decibels on the threshold level. In some cases uh, we won't see any uh, morphology of peak, but we can see the decreasing of uh, trend of the curve on the place of 5 peak. Okay, now let's register the second curve. So we can see in some cases like this we uh, don't see the good reproducibility and in some cases we need to register one more curve for example so uh, we press the same intensity and the program asks us to delete one of the previously registered traces so let's try to delete the first trace for example and after that uh, the program will start the stimulation uh, once again and we try to register another curve to estimate um, the quality of reproducibility of our responses in such level of intensity of stimulation. So we see the conditions are good enough, the residual noise level is low enough and the reproducibility number of FSP is high enough and to see that the main trends are reproducibility, reproducible so our peak is not a peak but the decreasing of the main trend of the curve now it can be on the newly result intensities so the quality is better in this case.
is on the can position the marker here using sensory monitor and see the latency also we can check latencies here in the table and to see the latency become longer now then we um, make the intensity level lower it is normal if no we go to the traces uh, window and we can save the results if we don't need to register anything um, else we can print via bluetooth printer and also we can export the results uh, on the pc uh, to the new audio screen manager program now a few words about uh, test template setup go to the setup menu choose the test settings let's start with the aabr default template we see we have two different default templates with the different levels intensity of stimulation and the other features are the same and you can't um, change anything in the default template but if you want to change something you should create a new one template and after that you can change for example some parameters maybe stimulus if you want click for example or electrode scheme it's actual for the little babies also you can uh, push here uh, then you want to uh, watch to the native curves to estimate the quality of signal during the acquisition let's go to the abr settings you see we have one default template also you see all the parameters but you can't change it if you want to change something create a new one and in such cases you can change for example the type of stimulator stimulus type uh, stimulus count and so on also you can choose different types of averaging and stimulation frequency after you finished setup go to the main menu today we have watched how to perform AABR and ABR tests in a baby I hope this video was useful for you thank you for your attention